today I will talk about an important issue which is I have discussed this earlier I have discussed that injection metallurgy is very important for getting enhanced quality. Now I try to explain why it is so, how it helps. I am mentioning here that injection of calcium that means if proper amount of calcium can be injected in liquid steel then it can help in different ways I will try to explain. The first we should remember that calcium is gas at about 1600 centigrade of temperature in liquid that means whatever can, calcium we inject in liquid steel it becomes gas because the vapor pressure is relatively very high 1.8 atmosphere that means at one atmosphere hardly any calcium will remain in the liquid steel because the vapor pressure is high. So, calcium will come out in the form of vapor. So, hardly any calcium will be retained in liquid steel. So, what is the way out? Way out is instead of calcium we send calcium silicon alloy within the liquid steel. This calcium silicon alloy which is known as CASI which has about 30 percent calcium. So, instead of 100 percent calcium if we send 30 percent calcium in the form of CASI. So, the vapor pressure will come down because you know why the activity of calcium is coming down here it is pure calcium here it is 30 percent calcium only. So, in this process the vapor pressure of CASI is much less compared to vapor pressure of calcium which becomes less than much less than one atmosphere. So, it is possible to retain calcium though some amount of calcium will be lost because even if the vapor pressure is less than one atmosphere still some amount of vapor of calcium will come out. But if you use CASI you know the loss of calcium will be much less rather than if you use calcium which cannot be used at all because all the calcium will be lost because the vapor pressure of pure calcium is much higher 1.8 atmosphere compared to normal atmospheric pressure. So, we use CASI calcium silicon alloy with about 30 percent calcium and not pure calcium for injection. So, this is the first important issue which we have to remember. Now, how is CASI injected in steel liquid steel? This CASI powder is encased inside steel tube and then this tube is fed deep inside the liquid bath using feeder. We call it wear feeder. This you know CASI powder encased in steel tube this is wound in the feeder as a spool. So, this then wear which is basically a steel tube inside which is calcium silicon powder has been put inside. So, it is a CASI powder encased in steel tube it is in the form of a we call it a wear which wear is fed through wear feeder deep inside the liquid steel you know how much of CASI is used it is about 2 to 4 kg per ton of steel this is very important. In what rate this wear should be fed this is very important. How deep should the wear go this is also very important because CASI is, is a powder relatively you know lighter it will try to come up moreover I have told you the CASI has a calcium has a you know probability of you know getting uh, or coming out of liquid steel because of this low vapor pressure. So, at what speed the ins, uh, you know the spool should rotate at what speed the wear should get inside the liquid bath these are all important issues. But the amount of CASI which is required per ton of steel has been found to be about 2 to 4 kg. You will find that the this is more than the theoretical level why it is so because some amount of calcium will always be lost. So, the yield of calcium from this CASI addition is not very high. So, therefore, we have to take into account this therefore, it has been found out through trial and error that about 2 to 4 kg per ton of steel is required for effective calcium injection. Now, what is the you know purpose of adding CASI in steel or calcium in steel? The basic idea is to form liquid inclusion 
in the form of alumina CaO, we know that alumina has a very high melting point. So, in normal liquid steel temperature of so 1600-1650, it is solid. I have told you earlier also. This solid creates problem. This will create problem not only during steel making, it might create problem when it is steel is solidified. Then if you have solid alumina inclusions, it might create problem during informability when you are rolling the steel, forging the steel. So, our aim is to convert the solid alumina inclusions to alumina, you know, CO alumina, then calcium aluminate liquid inclusion. We will come to it, how we can make it a liquid inclusion. That means, some amount of calcium is necessary. So, this calcium, it will show the dissolved calcium, how it will react with alumina inclusion to give rise to generate, you know, CaO. So, this CO will react with alumina inclusion. So, the inclusion will get converted to some combination of CO and Al2O3. So, that is again important what will form a CO, Al2O3, what is the ratio that is going to dictate, you know, whether it will be liquid or solid that uh, the temperature of the liquid steel. Now, please try to see or remember that calcium is reacting with alumina calcium will also react with sulfur because it is a good deoxidizer, also it is a good desulfurizer. That means, these two reactions, reaction of calcium with alumina in inclusions, solid alumina inclusions as well as calcium reacting with sulfur in liquid steel, both are occurring simultaneously. Now, it depends how much of sulfur is present, how much of aluminum is present which will dictate how much of reaction will take place with alumina because it, that is in equilibrium with aluminum in solution is in equilibrium with alumina as deoxidant. So, the amount of sulfur, aluminum and calcium in liquid steel, oxygen liquid steel, all these will determine what will form whether it will be solid inclusion, whether it will liquid inclusion, whether calcium sulfide will form to what extent whether calcium aluminate would form, what is the ratio of CO, Al2O3 in that compound, whether it will be liquid, all these things will be decided based on how much of calcium we are adding, how much of sulfur and aluminum is present in steel. These are very, very important considerations. So, let us now look at the Al2O3 CAO phase diagram. Alumina Al2O3, you know, melting point is very high. So, the, our liquid steel temperature is around maybe say here, somewhere around here, 15, 1550, 1600, slightly, maybe slightly more than 1600, not more than that. So, in this temperature range, if the inclusion has to be liquid, so what should be its constituent? The CaO is represented as capital C. Al2O3 is represented as aluminum for brevity. So, when we are talking of, you know, what are the constituents? You look at here, look at here. This is Ca. That means, one mole of, one molecule of calcium oxide is combined with one molecule of Al2O3. So, calcium aluminate, CaO Al2O3, which has a melting point of somewhere here. So, more than 1600, 1650 or so. So, only this particular, you know, compound which is having low melting point, which is around maybe 1350 or 1400. So, it is very clear that liquidus, if you want to bring down the liquidus, we need a very close range of CAO. That means, about 45 to 55 percent. Then only we can get C12 a 7 type of compound. So, basically it is 12 CaO 7 Al2O3. So, this has a very low melting point and this inclusion, if you have this chemistry, this inclusion is liquid. So, our aim is to get liquid inclusion. It should be liquid at steel making temperature. So, the idea is to add CaO, but if you do not add 
the required amount of CO it should not be very low. If it is very low that means that alumina melting point is high. If you go on adding some amount of small CO the liquidus is coming down but it is still higher higher only at this particular CO you know amount that means when it is 45 to 55 percent when C12 A7 type of inclusion is formed then only we have liquid inclusion. So, it is very important that how much of calcium addition is necessary this is very important. Just like that we go down go on adding calcium oxide if it is very less it is solid if it is very high then also it is a problem you know. First here I am showing that it is the, uh, the melting point is going to be high another problem is if you, if you have sulfur in liquid steel which is going to have going to be there it cannot be sulfur cannot be 0 if slum small number slightly larger amount of sulfur is present there is a formation of calcium sulfide I will come to it in the next subsequent slides. So, liquid inclusion is feasible only with careful control of calcium addition. I have shown in this slide that calcium is reacting with alumina inclusion and generating CO and this is reacting with alumina. So, CO alumina is forming the amount of calcium we add it how much of CO will form in the inclusion it depends on that. It depends on how much of aluminum is present in liquid steel which will dictate how much of alumina inclusion will be present. So, depending on how much calcium we are adding the ratio of aluminum to calcium will dictate what will be the formula of CaO L 2 O 3. This has to be as I have told you CaO 12 L 2 O 3 7 then only we get liquid inclusions then only the melting point of this inclusion is quite low and then it becomes liquid. So, we also do not want calcium sulphide because calcium sulphide is solid. Therefore, if you have large amount of you know soluble sulphur in steel and we go on adding calcium. So, after formation of this this also is going to happen. So, it is an equilibrium is try to understand what is happening. If you add calcium these reactions are happening simultaneously. Now, which one will form to what extent depends on how much calcium we are adding, how much aluminum and sulphur is there in steel. This will dictate whether there will be calcium sulphide in steel, whether there will be calcium aluminate and what is the formula of calcium aluminate. The formula will dictate what will be the melting point. So, all these are important issues. We want calcium oxide in the range of 45 to 55 which will react with alumina to give rise to 12 CO and 7 L2O3 which has very low melting point and makes the inclusion liquid. So, the amount of calcium addition I am again repeating is very very important and is related to it is not independent of the chemistry of steel it is related to the amount of aluminum and sulphur in steel. Moreover, I have told you earlier that calcium solubility in steel is not very high because it is very difficult to control calcium in liquid steel. That is why we are adding cassie and we are not adding calcium. Calcium addition just if you add calcium is almost impossible because the vapor pressure of yeah. calcium is very high. So, all this calcium will be lost as, as vapor from liquid steel at maybe 1600 degree centigrade. So, we are adding cassie which has only 30 percent calcium. Even with, with the addition of cassie some amount of calcium is lost as vapor from liquid steel. So, the solubility of calcium at 1600 degree centigrade is only to the extent of 0 to 5. That means, we even if we want we cannot add more than 0.25 percent 0 to 5 percent calcium in liquid steel. So, how much calcium will add whether it is 0 1 whether it is 0 2 it, and what is the you know amount of aluminum and sulphur in steel that is going to dictate whether we form liquid steel liquid inclusion or not in liquid steel. So, this is going to be a very important issue. Now, this particular you know figure shows what I was telling that 
the calcium and sulfur, aluminum, all why this th all three are important. This particular figure shows for a particular level of calcium, let, let us say assume that it is 0 to percent, we cannot add more than 0 to 5 percent calcium, even if we add it is going to be lost. That means, the, the liquid slag cannot contain liquid sorry liquid steel cannot contain more than 0 to 5 percent calcium at 1600 degree centigrade. So, how much calcium we will add whether it is 0 1, 0 1 5 or 0 2 that is going to play an important role depending on how much of aluminum and sulfur is present in liquid steel. So, for a particular amount of calcium let us assume that it is 0 2 in this particular figure. So, what is going to happen? Where is the liquid in due? Liquid in due is here. That means, if percentage of aluminum is more the possibility of going to a solid inclusion is increasing. Similarly, if the amount of dissolved sulphur is more possibility of going to a solid inclusion is increasing. Only way if the aluminum and sulphur sol solubility or they are soluble in liquid steel, what is their content in liquid steel, they are less then only we are getting a liquid inclusions for a particular level of calcium. So, this is please try to remember for ensuring liquid window for a particular level of calcium, both aluminum and sulfur, dissolved aluminum, dissolved sulfur in liquid steel, they are important. They should not be very high, neither sulfur nor aluminum should be very high. If aluminum is very high, you know, CA type of inclusions which are solid will form. That means, the solubility, uh, the melting point of the inclusion is going to be high. As I have shown, as I have shown in this particular uh, you know figure which depicts alumina CaO uh, system phase diagram, if you have very high amount of alumina, you know the melting point is high. As you are increasing the CaO, melting point is coming down, and at about 45 to 55 percent CaO, the uh, melting point is relatively less and at liquid steel temperature the inclusion will be liquid. So, if we have high you know high amount of aluminum in liquid steel that means, the inclusion will be more rich in alumina and the inclusion will be solid like C A and C A 3, C A 2, C A 6 you know compounds like this will form. But at the other end, if you have more amount of sulfur, what is going to happen? We have solid calcium sulfide. So, that is why both sulfur and aluminum present in liquid steel has to be within limits. Then only we have liquid inclusion. This, imp this is very important. We have to keep in mind to get the desired amount of liquid inclusions calcium sulphide has to be low and preferably you know CO should be around 45 to 55 percent. Then only we have a combination of alumina CO which is uh, you know which is having a uh, formula of CO 12, alumina 7 around this level of that means around 45 to 55 percent CO. Then only we have a liquid inclusion in liquid steel. So, the importance of aluminum and sulfur for getting this liquid window I am again highlighting this is very very important. So, amount of calcium will depend on how much of aluminum how, how much of sulfur is there in liquid steel to ensure we get liquid steel and not solid steel. Now, again this figure will show similar thing, but in a more relatively quantitative terms. I have mentioned here that inclusion modification by calcium is possible or feasible when if too low addition if we do, if we add less amount of calcium what is going to happen? You know this type of compounds are forming. 
C A 6 that means C A O 6 L 2 O 3, C A O 3 L 2 O 3, 2 L 2 O 3, C A O L 2 O 3, this type of you know, compounds are forming at the for this you know the calcium addition is the lowest and as you are increasing calcium these are the compounds which are forming. But we do not want this, we want 7 CaO or 12 CaO 7 Al 2 O 3 that means calcium oxide around around 45 to 55 percent. So, this is possible only for a particular level of addition of cal calcium. Moreover, if you go on adding calcium that means we go to higher level in the solubility limit that means maybe we go to around 0 to 5 or so which is a higher limit. We might form why might we I will actually form CAS also depending on there is some sulphur in the steel. So, there is a possibility of forming calcium sulphide which is again solid. So, just look at this figure this aluminum is ppm 200 ppm is 0 2 percent. So, if you have 0 2 percent aluminum in steel what is going to happen liquid window is here. So, calcium has to be accordingly somewhere here if you have low calcium at 0 2 what is going to happen we have calcium aluminate saturation that means we have solid calcium aluminate COAL 2 is solid we do not have a liquid uh, you know um, inclusion that means we are having maybe C A 6 C A this type of combinations which are having solid. So, we have to have some amount of good amount of relatively more amount of calcium maybe somewhere here maybe somewhere 15 amount of ppm is necessary then only we have good amount of liquid uh, you know inclusions. Now, look at the sulphur level this figure has been you know drawn on the basis of calculations done for liquid steel temperature of 1550 which is quite reasonable and a total oxygen of 20 ppm. That means, oxygen here also is playing a important role because this dictates how much of oxygen is present, how much of dissolved aluminum will be present to get that much of dissolved oxygen, what will be the sulphur level this is also important. Now, if we have very low amount of sulphur say 005, you see the liquid window is quite large. So, that means, the amount of calcium the window of calcium is slightly more that means, it can be from 10 to 25 any amount of calcium is good enough. Beyond 25 is not possible to uh, retain because it will come out of calcium. So, 25 if you take 25 is the maximum amount. So, minimum say let us assume has to be 10. So, the liquid window is indicating you know for this amount of aluminum say 0 2 or 0 to 5 we are getting about say 10 to say 20 or 25, 22 this amount of calcium is good enough. Now, if you increase the sulphur level in the steel say if you have 0 somewhere here say 0 to 0 somewhere here. So, what is going to happen? The amount of calcium has to be restricted to maybe around 15. So, it is very close 10 to 15. If you have less than 10 ppm calcium calcium aluminate whatever calcium aluminate is forming this type of calcium aluminates which is solid. If you have more calcium more than 15 for this amount of sulphur we have calcium sulphide. Beyond this calcium sulphide is forming. So, as sulphur is coming down our liquid window is becoming very narrow. So, we have to operate in a very close range of calcium look at this figure. 0 4 0 if you have such high level of sulphur and if you are not careful about adding calcium what is going to happen even 15 percent you know 15 rather 15 ppm calcium will generate calcium sulphide which is solid. So, our liquid window is becoming very very narrow which is very difficult to actually operate because you know when you are doing calcium addition I have told you is very tricky you know if you add more of calcium more of uh, it will be lost. So, control of calcium is very difficult. So, control of calcium within this narrow range will be very difficult that is why we need some lower sulphur for getting a good 
amount of good rather a large amount of liquid window where we can have slightly more broader range of calcium where we can get liquid calcium. So, it is important to know that aluminum content, calcium content, oxygen and sulfur these are all very important parameters for getting inclusion modification. Because as I am again and again repeating you see the interesting thing here if you add or do not add or add less amount of calcium we are getting either alumina or this type of inclusion CA6, CA2, CA this type of inclusions as alumina as CO is increasing we are going from CA6 to CA2 to CA finally, we will go to maybe C12, A7 type of inclusion which is the desirable at around combination of say around 45 to 55 percent CO. So, as we are increasing CA, CAO in CAO alumina type of inclusion is increasing and only at a particular level of CA we are getting a liquid you know um, inclusion, but if you go beyond that that means if you increase CA if the sulphur is more we are going to for calcium sulphide more and more of calcium sulphide which is solid. So, our liquid window becomes more narrow more restricted if you have more aluminum if you have more sulphur this is a problem then the calcium has to be within a very small range. So, this is the problem for calcium addition we have to be very careful how much of calcium we are adding what is the sulphur content sulphur should not be more then we are, we are forming solid calcium sulphide. So, the, the inclusion is solid it is not liquid anymore if you have very small amount of calcium addition we are getting this type of inclusion CA6, CA2, CA the melting points are relatively high. So, again we are getting solid. So, if you have less calcium solid inclusions if you have more calcium solid inclusions the reason here is calcium sulphide reason here is inclusions of this constituents CA6, CA2. So, the reason might be different, but we are getting solid inclusions. So, to get a liquid window we have to operate at low sulphur level, low aluminum level relatively and calcium in the range of say about 15 to 20. If we can control calcium which is very difficult again and again I am telling within this range we will definitely get liquid inclusions in steel. So, please if we summarize here too low addition forms high melting constituents too high addition promotes solid CS formation. So, calcium has to be optimum depending on what is aluminum what is the sulphur. Liquid window becomes narrow at higher sulphur as I am telling you as the sulphur is increasing this way the liquid window is become initially liquid window was the whole thing liquid window has become narrow more narrow as sulphur is increasing that is as coming down the window is becoming more and more narrow. The formation of low melting calcium aluminate phase C12 base 7 which is the desired constituent which should form. So, the ratio of calcium aluminum is important what is the aluminum in steel the calcium should depend on that what was the sulphur in steel you know calcium also should depend on that, but we have not much leeway here sulphur should be low then only we have certain leeway then only we have slightly higher range of calcium optimum calcium if the sulphur is more the optimum calcium is very very narrow which is very difficult to actually get. So, optimum calcium addition depends on what is aluminum and sulphur in liquid steel and as I am again and again mentioning soluble sulphur should be low to get a relatively large liquid window where we can operate where the calcium will be calcium range will be reasonable more practical to get more realistic to get. I think I have tried to highlight that inclusion modification by calcium is theoretically possible, but we have to be careful about amount of sulphur amount of aluminum in liquid steel. So, this will dictate how much of calcium 
you know range will be there, optimum range will be there for getting liquid window. Less is the sulfur, the optimum calcium range becomes more narrow. So, it is more difficult to obtain, more difficult to obtain uh, you know operate at that narrow level of calcium. So, even if you try we may not get liquid, uh, liquid inclusion. So, this is the problem with inclusion modification by calcium. We have to be very, very careful. Our desulfurization should be proper. The sulfur level must be brought down earlier through desulfurization, then only we are adding calcium. This is very important. Deoxidation is first, desulfurization is next. Then I have talked about degassing to take care of oxygen, nitrogen, which is useful or which is effective only when oxygen is less in liquid steel, sulfur is less in liquid steel. Now, I am talking about inclusion modification, where again sulfur has to be less, then only inclusion modification by calcium is possible in reality. Otherwise, it is going to be a theoretical proposition only, as I am trying to harp here, harp upon here that to get a realistic calcium range, a slightly you know bigger calcium range, say 10 to 20, if you take this is the realistic calcium range which will, which will give liquid window, the sulphur has to be less than 0 1, 0 1 you see it cannot exceed 0 1. Aluminum has to be less than 0 to 5, it cannot be more than that, otherwise you know this liquid window is becoming more and more narrow. So, that is the requirement, that is the essential requirement for getting inclusion modification by using calcium.